I began this painting a while back while we were camping in our wall tent in a remote part of Utah. The lighting inside our tent was very difficult to work under. It constantly changed as the clouds rolled through and the temperature of it was very warm. And so at the beginning of this video, you'll notice a lot of changing environment as I work. What I remember most about my time down in Utah, or at least what I felt I was most captivated by, was watching the storms roll over the high desert plains. There was something about the air and atmosphere, or even the landscape, that made everything appear so dramatic. And so when I watched this one storm roll by, it just captured my attention, and I knew that this had to be the subject matter of this next larger piece. Using some photo reference of mine, I tried to accurately block in the painting with the appropriate colors, and once I returned to the studio is when I really got to work on the piece. I used oil paint and primarily one paintbrush throughout most of this process. This brush in particular was a very old, raggedy looking brush. It was very frayed. And I think it's a, a good testament to the fact that there is no special trick or cure to a good painting. There's no tool or paintbrush that's going to do it for you. And it really just comes down to the patience and the hard work that's put into it. And so, if I had one piece of advice to give for anybody looking to successfully paint clouds is to pick a soft brush, have patience, and simply know that it's going to take a very long time to get things to look the way that you want them to. And so don't rush it and just know that there's no special technique that I used in this painting. Overall, I have roughly three layers of paint applied to this canvas. I did the initial block in, let that dry, and then what you're seeing me do now is a wet in wet stage where I went through the entire painting once again in small runs. I did not do this all in one day, but rather broke apart the painting into sections and painted each one wet and wet and then tried to tie that in into the following day's work and so on. I think that this second layer probably took me the better half of two to three weeks to finish, probably more about two weeks. And that wasn't straight through, that was on and off working on some other projects as well. Basically, what I did was try to follow the template of my underpainting, which I already had on my canvas, and try to make any adjustment that I saw fit in terms of color and contrast, or perhaps smoothness. And I used a lot of paint to apply these techniques, and essentially tried to manipulate that into the look I was after before it dried. Because most of this cloud was generally a similar color and tone, I didn't really wash my brush throughout much of this process. And so I'd start with perhaps the color of some shadows, and then I would just start picking up some lighter tones and just go ahead and mix that in as I worked. And so my brush was just sort of an ever-changing color from my palette, which allowed me to sort of blend each area into the next. A lot of times I did use my paper towel to pat the brush dry and wipe off the excess paint, but I never really washed my brush. Only at the end of each day did I do that. But overall, I think that I've learned when painting such complex skies like this is to really focus on the small pictures rather than the large picture as a whole because I think it's easy to overwhelm ourselves with all the different things going on. And although that's important to look at the big picture, 
I think it's also important to focus on the small details because by breaking it down into one brush stroke at a time or maybe one small texture at a time, I think it's easier for me at least to break down the painting overall. And it allows me to simplify what I'm doing and focus on the brush stroke at hand. And as long as I know that my underpainting is accurate in terms of the composition of the piece, then I know that I can trust that and focus on those small single brush strokes at a time. And with patience, I think it produces a very beautiful piece, um, something that you're seeing develop here now. So my best piece of advice for painting complex clouds such as this would be to make sure that you have first and foremost a good accurate composition laid down on your canvas, something that you can see and follow easily. And then the next thing is to just start thinking small and focus on the texture at hand. If it's a very small highlight on a mountain in the distance or maybe just a small piece of rain falling from the sky underneath the clouds just focus in on that one object and just try to accurately portray that and if you can do that down to the single brush stroke then i think you can paint the whole sky another good way to put it would be if you can paint one blade of grass with a liner brush then you could paint an entire field. And that might be a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but I think that concept helps me when constructing a very difficult piece. And then beyond that, it just simply takes practice and time. And throughout many paintings, I think we all find our voice and begin to figure out something that not only ourselves can appreciate, but others as well. I use this same brush for painting much of the foreground as well. And it just shows the versatility in a single brush rather than needing many different brushes for different textures. And so this old frayed brush also worked very well to pat on the texture of grass. And so again, I'd use a lot of paint, very thick paint, and just use those frayed tips of the brush hairs to just dab on the, the hint of highlights in the grass, the hints of brush and shrubs and I just basically worked my way through the foreground in that exact way. Once that second layer had dried, I went in for a third and final layer to brighten up some of the highlights primarily. And so I was focused on the cloud for the most part, and I used white along with some Indian yellow to really brighten up that center area and just try to make certain things pop. I wanted to increase the contrast throughout the piece to make things a little more dramatic. And I also wanted to hold the viewer's attention towards the center of the painting and draw you in. I've been fascinated with storm clouds throughout my whole life probably. And this piece I thought was so fitting for our experience in Utah. The scenery that we saw was beautiful and I'll never forget that. But there was something about the impact that the weather had on me 
that I think left a more permanent impression and something that I really wanted to capture in this piece. I'm sure that I'll be revisiting this subject matter in the near future. Thanks for watching.